All right, in this video, we're going to talk about how we use these word pairs and how we use part of the same different exercise. So right now we're going to do the same exercise. Uh, and we're going to look at two things that are super different and see if we can find some similarities. So hopefully this video will give you an idea of just what on earth you're trying to do with these words, what you're allowed to do, all that kind of stuff. Uh, okay, so in here, you know, you can type noun pairs and you can get all this stuff. And I've got a whole bunch of noun pairs that were given to me. And these are all random words. All right, so when I look through these, um, first I'm going to look for ones that are maybe too obvious and kind of count them out, right? So uh, tuna and kitchen I would probably not use, mostly because the easy connection is a bit too easy. So we start out and it's like, oh, okay, you know, well, you, you make tuna for dinner in a kitchen. Oh, yeah, that's like too obvious, right? Disease and insurance. Um, you know, if you have a disease, you need insurance. It's still, it's like a bit too obvious. So at least for starters, maybe try to avoid some of those more obvious ones um, and recognize that you can pair up any of these words with other words as well. So if you really like one particular word, you really want to talk about kitchens for some reason, you can pair that up with something different. Uh, but so let's see, if I look through Ash and Encyclopedia, that's kind of an interesting one, right? The more different the things seem, the better it's going to be for you. So maybe Richard is not as helpful, but if I want to use eggplant, I could do eggplant and lake, something like that. As if they're very, very different, there won't be any obvious connections between them. And that's your goal. It's good, right? Because it's going to make your life a whole lot easier because you don't want to have obvious things. Uh, but let's see, maybe I decide I kind of like this one over here, answer and string, right? Those two things, pretty different from each other. So what am I going to do with that? Okay, so maybe I look over, I'm, you know, coming up with similarities between answer and string, and I think answers connect us to some kind of a question, right? And string can connect two things. So now, when you get into your actual essay, right, you're not going to talk about answers and strings. Maybe you'll talk about answers, but, you know, less likely about strings, you're going to talk mostly about the idea of connection or interconnectedness or breaking connections or something of that nature, right? Any kind of a thing like that. Um, what else do we have in terms of this? Uh, okay, so the answer is actually like the end of a thing, usually. Um, the string is sort of the middle, right? So it's like tying two things together. That's actually a difference, not a similarity, but that's okay, right? So this example is here to show you that sometimes you'll find an interesting difference between different things. Well, that's kind of like maybe less common, but, you know, checking out all these kinds of ideas. Um, so position in this case is kind of the bigger theme in terms of that, right? If you put different things in unexpected positions, what happens? Maybe that means that a person is serving a different role. Maybe it means that a physical object is not in its correct place. No idea, right? It's, it's literally a theme that you are inventing, so it can be anything at all. Um, that is usually a little bit maybe sort of terrifying, right, at first, because, yeah, it, it can be anything, and therefore you have no idea what thing it specifically is, really. Um, but it is also freeing as you start to become creative with this idea. It doesn't have to mean any one particular thing, and that's very good, right? Okay, what else do we get? So let's say we get stuck, right? We get a little bit stuck. Answers and string, they're just so different. Like, what can we find that's similar about them? Sometimes I like to just pick one of the things and dive a bit deeper into that thing, right? So strings, we have, uh, strings can call to mind instruments, right? There's an entire category of string instruments. Um, we could also have string theory, okay? So that's like a, a scientific thing. Um, in my mind, one of the things that pops up is two cups with a string in between, right? And that's that little thing that, that kids use to sort of talk to each other like a, like a phone or something. Um, that has a lot of other applications as well. So if you ever went to a playground as a child, sometimes at playgrounds they have um, these places where you can stand and talk to someone else, uh, even though it's very far away and it's usually based on like, you know, reverberating sounds and the way that the structure is built and it's really cool. So uh, maybe something like that is brought up. 
Um, maybe it makes me think of hair, right? So that's super different from everything else, but you know, whatever. It's, it's like an idea, okay? Um, silly string, that's a little bit more goofy. And maybe, you know, so it makes me think of threads, right? So threads that make up a fabric. And this one, for me, brought up the following idea. So both thread and answers weave things together. Answers get strung together to create new questions. Thread creates fabric, okay? Um, and then maybe we say, okay, well, well, you can't see the full design if you look only at one string, and you can't see the whole system or the next step or the big solution to your problem if you look at only one answer along the way. That's another similarity. Um, so you guys have worked on perspective before. We can get a new perspective here of, you know, hey, I'm the type of person who looks at the big picture instead of the tiny details, right? That's a useful perspective. And that can be combined with some of these themes, like, you know, interweaving things um, similar to connectedness from before. Maybe just the concept of creation, you know, entirely. Um, the concept of questioning, how we develop questions, the way that questions, you know, guide us through life, that sort of a thing. Um, or, you know, design, right? So we have, you know, this, this full design kind of a thing. Maybe we want to talk about, you know, an artistic design, fabric design, um, the design of a more technological system, right? A computer or a robot, any kind of design, you know, sort of category. So the goal here being that you're deriving these themes, these sort of catchwords that you're going to be able to apply to something else, right? Let's look at that part. Oh, actually, let's do this first. Um, as another example, if we go back to our list of things, you know, so we have instruments also. Um, instruments also can bring to mind, you know, any of these things can bring to mind something. Silly string didn't really do it for me, but threads and instruments did. So for string instruments, the strings vibrate to create sound. Um, answers send out ripples into the world. So it's kind of a similar, you know, waves um, type of a thing. Many answers are disruptive, right? So a lot of times, you know, when Galileo decided that the Earth was not the center of the universe, uh, people got a little bit cranky pants, right? Um, and then some answers can cause great excitement or energy. Obviously, there's a lot of things. When we, like, found the cure for polio, everybody was like, oh my gosh, this is so great and amazing and isn't that wonderful? Um, so definitely, there's, there's stuff like that, right? Okay, um, perspective in this case, to give you an idea of perspective again, seeing everything as vibrations, seeing everything as waves, right? So maybe your perspective is very, very much based on cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect, um, and that the effect creates a new cause, right? Something like that. So it's kind of this like rippling effect. That's an interesting perspective that you can apply to the whole world. Um, and then you can also combine them with these themes, right? So we have these ideas of vibration and ripples and waves, and also possibly this idea of disruption. You would want to do it in a positive way, so some kind of positive disruption, but that's kind of cool, right? So um, just, you know, second idea. Uh, this came about just from looking at, like, okay, what types of things do we have inside of the word strings? You could do the same for the word answers. You can do the same for, obviously, whichever words are inside of your current word pair that you're exploring. Okay, cool. So, how do we apply this outwards? If we go back to our original thing, the answer connects us to the question, and strings connects two things. Okay, so that brought us to these concepts of connectedness or breaking connections. This is sort of two minutes of my sitting and brainstorming got me to this place, right? So I chose to apply it to the bigger concepts of chemistry and home, right? What does home mean? Um, that question actually shows up sometimes in, uh, in some supplemental questions on the essays. Uh, so, you know, what does home mean to you or describe a place that you felt like home and, and why, something like that. And so we can read this. Some of the most powerful acts in history came not from creating connections, but from breaking them. The separation of two seemingly inseparable things can have explosive effects. Obviously, this here is kind of talking about maybe like atom bomb type stuff, but it doesn't even it doesn't need to mention that specifically. It doesn't need to say, and then you take this atom and you separate it from this other atom, and this is what happens inside of chemistry. And here's some very specific facts. You don't have to go there, right? Um, 
everybody sort of understands this. Everybody knows about, you know, what happened in World War II. Everyone's there, same page. So you've got that. Uh, and then we transition into, I once thought that I was inseparable from my home down, hometown of Placeville, you know, wherever you're from. But when my family broke ties and settled in other Placeville, I learned that home is most impactful when it is far, far away. All right. I totally made this up. It doesn't necessarily mean anything, right? But one of the things you'll learn later is obviously it's good not to be cliche. Okay. This you've already learned. You should have already learned it. But also it's good to have a position with which people could disagree. So this concept, you know, home is most impactful when it is far, far away. Well, that doesn't even make any sense, right? It's literally is like impossible. Like home is where you are. Like here I am. I'm in my home. That doesn't make sense. Okay, good. That's good, right? Now we're in a place where the reader is interested because you have said something that doesn't make any sense. And if you can back this up with an explanation that does make sense or just is in any way interesting, then you're golden, right? You're basically, you know, signing the papers to get into the college. So, this is the whole thing. Um, this is just the one side of it. So right now we're just practicing two different things, finding similarities. This is kind of how we work it. Totally explore anything at all. Um, you know, look for these themes inside of each individual word. See if you can connect them back to each other. Super freedom here. Let's practice.